It is pretty amazing just how much we know about the Earth's interior, given that we can only directly observe a tiny fraction of it. When we learn about the layers of the Earth, we are told that the crust is very thin relative to the overall size of the Earth. But that is only on the scale of the rest of the Earth. Relative to the scale of the tools we use to study the Earth, 30 kilometers is a huge distance, and the conditions become terribly harsh quite close to the surface. The deepest mines only go down a few kilometers, and the deepest hole ever drilled is just 12 kilometers deep. Efforts to drill in regions where the crust is thin have all been forced to stop as heat at the bottom of the well increased to the point beyond what the drilling equipment could handle. No boreholes have ever come close to the depth of the mantle. Due to our lack of access to the Earth's interior, scientists must rely on indirect observations. One way they do this is by studying the movement of pressure waves as they travel through the interior of the Earth. This is called seismology. Unlike the surface waves we see moving across the surface of bodies of water, the waves seismologists study move through material. These types of waves are called body waves. They are caused by large explosions, storm activity, meteorite impacts, and earthquakes. The waves caused by earthquakes are the most widely studied. When an earthquake occurs somewhere inside the Earth, two types of body waves are created. These are often referred to as P and S waves, where P stands for primary and S for secondary. These names relate to the speed the waves travel. Primary waves travel faster than secondary waves, so they are the first ones to arrive at any point distant from the epicenter of the earthquake. Differences in the arrival time of S and P waves at different locations around the world is one way seismologists use these waves to determine the location or epicenter of earthquakes deep underground. P waves are longitudinal waves in which the particles move back and forth in the same orientation as the wave's propagation. They are sometimes called push waves because particle motion pushes energy along in the same orientation as the direction the wave moves. S waves, sometimes called shear waves, are transverse waves in which particle motion is at right angles to the direction the wave propagates. This is similar to the motion of a wave along a length of rope that has just been snapped. In addition to helping locate the site of underground earthquakes, movement of these waves through the Earth provides seismologists with information about the composition of the Earth's interior. The longitudinal motion of P waves can pass through solids, liquids, and gases, while the shearing motion of S waves only move through solids. Liquids and gases prevent the propagation of S waves. Hotter areas cause waves to travel more slowly, revealing the presence of hot spots. Partially molten areas, such as the athenosphere, weaken but do not completely stop S waves. Molten regions cause P waves to slow down and completely stop S waves. All of these predictable behaviors provide seismologists with information about the regions of the Earth waves pass through after every earthquake. In addition to the composition influencing the behavior of each wave, both S and P waves travel faster through more dense material, and since density increases with depth, waves speed up as they move deeper into the Earth. Not only do they speed up, the change in density also causes the waves to travel in curved paths as they move through the Earth. The curving of these waves is similar to the refraction that occurs when a light ray passes through an interface between two media like air to glass. But rather than an abrupt change in direction like we see in the air glass example, P and S waves undergo a gradual change in direction as density changes gradually with depth. The fact that these waves travel at different speeds at different depths results in some surprising behavior. When an earthquake occurs near the surface, body waves move out in all directions. Waves that start moving deeper into the earth encounter higher density material and as a result start moving faster. At the same time, they undergo gradual refraction that can eventually reach a critical angle resulting in them turning back towards the surface. At the same time, other waves, which stay near the surface, continue to move at a slower, constant speed. The faster speed of the deeper waves means that at some point distant from the earthquake, the deeper waves arrive sooner than the shallow waves that took a more direct path. P and S waves do refract more abruptly when they pass through major transition zones separating the layers of the Earth. The distinct interfaces between layers, such as the transition 
between the mantle and the outer core are called seismic discontinuities, reflecting the fact that seismic data is what allowed these regions to be identified. The understanding of how speed, direction, and refraction patterns of P and S waves are influenced by changes in the composition, phase, temperature, and density of the material they pass through has allowed scientists to infer a great deal about the Earth's interior. The first discontinuity waves encounter on their journey into the Earth is called the Mohorovicic discontinuity. This is named after the Croatian scientist who discovered it. It is also commonly referred to as the Moho for short. It is the boundary between the crust and the mantle. It appears in seismic data as a distinct change in speed due to change in the density of the rocks on either side of this boundary. The next discontinuity is the partially molten asthenosphere. This shows up as another change in velocity and as a weakening of the S waves. As the waves move deeper into the Earth, they encounter another discontinuity 670 kilometers below the surface due to a change in the composition of the minerals that make up the upper and lower mantle. The density of the mantle increases here, resulting in a speeding up of the waves. The next discontinuity is at the core mantle boundary. At this boundary, shear waves disappear completely. The disappearance of the S waves shows that the outer core is liquid. P waves refract significantly at the core mantle boundary, providing more information about the change in composition deep inside the Earth. The speed of travel and the refraction patterns of P waves is consistent with there being another seismic discontinuity at the boundary between the molten outer and solid inner cores. The disappearance of the S waves and the refraction of the P waves create shadow zones where no waves are detected. Consistent with the liquid outer core preventing the propagation of shear waves, no S waves are detected past 103 degrees from the origin of the waves. The refraction patterns of the P wave creates a gap in P wave detection between 103 and 143 degrees. Like much of the best science, our knowledge of the Earth's interior comes from multiple lines of evidence. In addition to the movement of waves, scientists have gained information from laboratory experiments about how different minerals behave at different pressures, observations about how the Earth's magnetic and gravitational fields vary over space, measurements of how much heat escaped from the Earth's interior, analysis of minerals from inside the Earth brought up to the surface by tectonic activity, and the study of meteors that are made from the same material that the Earth formed from. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment with any questions or suggestions, and if you want to keep up with the content here at Science Primer, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.